Welcome to the latest episode of the IEA's School of Thought series. I'm Len Shackleton. I'm the Editorial and Research Fellow at the Institute of Economic Affairs, and I'm Professor of Economics at the University of Buckingham. Now, this series is based on the IEA book School of Thought, 101 Great Liberal Thinkers, written by Eamon Butler. As the title suggests, it summarizes the thoughts of leading classical thinkers, classical liberal thinkers, on a range of issues, and it discusses them uh, within a modern context. All the episodes in this series can be found on the IEA YouTube channel, IEA London, on the IEA podcast, which is available on Podbean, Apple and Spotify, and our website, uh, which is iea.org.uk. Now, today's featured thinker is Gary Becker, the Nobel Prize winning American economist, who was once touted by Milton Friedman as the greatest social scientist who has lived and worked in the second half of the 20th century. Now, to discuss the man, his ideas, his contribution to classical liberal thought, I'm delighted to be joined by my old friend, Professor Stanley Siebert, Professor of Labour Economics at the Business School, University of Birmingham. Stan, welcome. Thank you for inviting me. I'd like to start uh, with, by asking you, who was Gary Becker and what was his contribution to economics? Well, uh, I, I've been studying Gary Becker for so many years, perhaps even 50, uh, um, because because he, he, he's the economist's economist, and he studies what, what Eamon Butler has nicely called it. He studies what used to be called sociological topics, but topics which are very, very important for our lives. Uh, marriage, children, crime, education and training, statistical decision-making, the uses of leisure, uh, and, and the thing that I, that, that I began with was uh, discrimination, uh, because I was brought up in Central Africa, and uh, I, it took me some time to appreciate this, that, 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 that there was an institutional setup called apartheid, which, which, which baked in stone this terrible treatment. Uh, and, and then, so it was a surprise to me to see that there was actually an economic analysis of this very phenomenon by, by Gary Becker in, 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 his, in his wonderful book, The Economics of Discrimination. This is a 50 year old copy, uh, still pretty well thumbed. Uh, and so uh, he's, he's, he's the, the man that, uh, he, as he himself puts it, he, 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 he puts rational choice theory to work uh, in, in these very important areas. Yes, now that is interesting because of course, prior to Becker's work, um, discrimination had been considered to be beyond, you know, beyond the, the scope of, of rational economic analysis. But Be Becker changed this, didn't he? I mean, how, how he, you did your PhD, I think, in, uh, on this very topic. I mean, how did Becker treat the idea of discrimination? How does it differ from the sort of sociological explanation of discrimination? Well, um, Becker has had to endure quite a lot of jeering. Um, there, was e there's even, there was even an article in the AER by Alan Blinder, famous economist on the economics of toothbrushing. This is meant to be a satire on, on Becker, but I, I, we don't need to worry about that. Now discrimination, Becker brings forward the idea that discrimination is due to, it, well, discrimination is irrational. Um, you, don't, you don't employ someone let's say a, a woman who's as productive as a man but costs less you you don't employ any men in that case it's it's not it's not it's not an equilibrium and uh, so becker starts from that point and he says if you observe that sort of strange behavior it must be because the person who's who, who's doing this the employer 
it must have a taste, a taste for for a taste for male workers. Now th th that's that sounds incredible, but that's the only possible explanation. And, and rather neatly, it brings Becker's Becker's analysis of tastes, which he's always interested in, and which goes right throughout his work. Well, Robert, what Becker is saying, really, is that, that uh, competition would tend to eliminate discrimination. Um, and, and that if discrimination persists, it's because there are sort of barriers to entry or whatever, which may be enforced by the government. Okay. Um, this view has never been totally accepted, has it? I, I mean, if you, if you read the literature on discrimination, it, 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 uh, it's... Uh, it's seen as, as something which um, goes beyond. I mean, for one thing, which Becker, Becker mentions, of course, is that discrimination is not just by employers, it's by uh, customers, it's by fellow workers, it's by governments and so on. Um, I, and I, you know, I feel one of the, the, the great strengths of Becker's approach is, is that it can, it can cope with a whole range of different factors which, uh, which imp impinge on discrimination. It's, it's, a, it's a way of classifying. Uh, this this ugly phenomenon, mm -hmm. and, and of course you see the, the the consumer discrimination quite clearly in the football field, where you have these this horrible chanting. Uh, yeah. the, the, yeah. the, 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 the the fans. Well, there's there's, the there's certainly discrimination out there, uh, and but what what Becker enables us to do is is to is to think about how what are the factors which uh, which give it potency in the labor market and what possibly can be done about it. And the nice, the rather neat thing is that the person that is not to blame for it is the boss. <laughs> right, that, okay, well, let's, let's, let's move on from-, from My from, students from, have always got <laughs> difficulty grasping that. Let's move on from that for a moment to, uh, one, of, one of the uh, things which Becker is always associated with uh, is human capital. This idea originally by Adam Smith, of course, uh, which Becker, together with other Chicago economists like uh, Theodore Schultz and Jacob Mincer, developed into a whole body of thought, which has uh, it's a huge amount of work done on this. I mean, what's your take on, on the human capital revolution, which Becker helped to stimulate? Well, well Becker, Becker's book on human capital has been cited 50,000 times on Google Scholar. Uh, um, he, he began his work on human capital, the very term of the very, the very term causing hackles to rise. He, he began his work in 1960, in the early 60s. And, um, uh, and, and, and well, education is so important. He shows you how you can, you can treat it as, it's, it's another good, which, which you buy. Um, he shows quite clearly that it has costs and returns, and you can work out an internal rate of return. But um, uh, 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 and and this has consequences because, uh, well, one of the most important f sources of funds is the parent, because you can't you can't in, you you can't use your brain as collateral for a, for a loan, uh, even though your brain. Is is just as important an investment for you as buying any house or the, the biggest house you can. Your brain is your capital, mm. and uh, and unfortunately, th there's an imperfection in the in the capital market, which means that you have to rely on your parents. So this is this immediately means that there's inequality in the world because the people who with the better off parents get get, get the funds. And this, this makes a reason for why the state should step in and fund, fund, fund schooling. Although, as we, as we see, this funding is sadly inadequate and it gets, it gets taken away by the trade unions, the teaching trade unions. I know you don't like to hear that, Len, but um, I'm just joking. As we know in the Institute of Economic Affairs, trade unions are not necessarily your friend. And so, although, Although we can see a rationale for the state taking a role, uh, its its role is often neutered. By the way, well, it's, it's very important, uh, um, um, Stan, in 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 the way in which we've developed the student loan system, for example. This is, you know, the, the Becker 
um, puts his finger on the idea of, of no, uh, young people not having collateral and finding it difficult to borrow money on the strength of their future earnings and many parents can't afford to do this so the student loans thing follows logically really from yeah. from human capital yeah, it does. It so does. very important yeah. in that sense. it does and, and also the way it's contingent on your success in the labor market and so you don't have to repay it unless you earn more than 25 or 26,000, mm -hmm. which is another Beckerian idea. But one thing to mention as well, there are two more things. First of all, Becker is very important as regards training. Um, uh, he, he thought of the idea, the distinction between general and specific training. So, so his human capital doesn't only apply to human capital gained in an institution like a university or a school. It relates to human capital gained on the job, which is a very important form, of course. Um, and um, you, you, in the same way as you pay for your own training at, at school, you don't, it's well, perhaps not at school, but certainly at university through not earning, one of, the most, one of the most important forms of cost of education is your foregone earnings. Uh, in the same way, uh, in the firm, you forego earnings to get training opportunities. So you own your training, if it's general. If it's specific, if it's some sort of training that you can only use in the firm, Becker shows that the firm will participate in paying for that. Uh, and so, you, so, so you, won't have, you won't have to earn peanuts while you train. You'll get paid a good, uh, you'll pay, you'll, 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 you'll get paid a, a, good, a good salary. And um, so the, the distinction between general and specific training is the Becker, Becker's idea, which is very important. Um, uh, and and the, the, another idea which we should mention is that the the family uh, the the, fa the family promotes education. It pays for it, and it also develops the the, ch the child's work ethic if if things go well. Um, and and this is because the the parents are altruistic. You see, you don't have to be selfish uh, in Becker's world. You you can be selfish, but you might you 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 you're not selfish towards your own, and in fact he's developed this into an it's an evolutionary thing. You 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 look after your children because you love them and because you hope they'll look after you when you're old. <laughs> well, we we certainly have that stuff. Uh, and now it's interesting you should say that because my own interest in in Becker really began when I was an undergraduate with his. Uh, analysis of the economics of fertility and this rather crazy idea as it seemed at the time of children as some form of consumer durable and, and analyzed in that sense but Becker goes on from this doesn't he to a whole range of things to do with the economics of the family marriage divorce uh, all that kind of stuff I mean what's your what's your take on all that yes. well um, Becker the, the, we should look we can look at uh, uh, there's marriage there's divorce, there's fertility. Uh, and under, behind all this, there, 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 are, there are, of course, are women and men. And uh, women have, women undertake the, the, the childbearing role normally in the traditional family, uh, and, and men go out and earn, earn the money. Uh, this, of course, is changing. Um, we, we see that families are becoming smaller, Divorce is on the increase, women's labor forces participation is going up, and women's wages are going up. He also goes into marriage. And this is something that, that, is called, that caused great controversy at the time. Marriage is a market. Marriage is a good. Really? Do, do you mean to say that, that, when I, that when I look for my wife, for a wife, I, I'm trading my money and my looks for her money and her looks? This, this, this was revolutionary. And in fact, great economists like Robert Solow said that they they would they, they said that Becker's work on the economics uh, of the family in the Journal of Political Economy in 1973 and another part in 1974 shouldn't be published. They were against this, uh, um, but but of course he's quite right. Um, it is controversial. Uh, I, I've been criticised here at Birmingham University for for wondering why so many English, uh, well, let's put it a different way. Uh, the, English, the English students here are mainly girls, not boys. 
Um, one wonders why that is. Perhaps that's because of what they've been trained to, 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 train to do at home. And of course, you can get discrimination amongst uh, in child in preference formation, and in, that's reducing. Well, one of my best friends studied English, a male friend, because there were so many girls studying English and there was a great opportunity and he got a very beautiful wife as a result. Um, so, so there is a marriage market and uh, Becca, Becca was the first to, to analyze this. Mm -hmm. um, another set of uh, ideas which have caused a lot of controversy, of course, is, is Becca's analysis of, of uh, apparent irrationality, addiction, crime, uh, these kind of things. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, well, uh, we, we, I'm trying to find my, my slide on this. Um, uh, okay. Um, so crime is another choice um, that some people make. Uh, cigarettes, opioids, these are also choices. And so you can put, you can, you can analyze the, 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 these, these phenomena through the same lens. Uh, it's, it's a choice, uh, there, are pri there are costs, and, the, and there are benefits. Um, the economics of crime, uh, the, the, the Becker's, Becker's work always gets cited. It is the locus classicus for any analysis of crime. And, and from it, you, from it, you get quite, quite, uh, quite sensible results. If you raise the costs of committing a crime, you reduce, you reduce the number of crimes. High, uh, high employment uh, has has a beneficial effect uh, on, on reducing crime, and of course, the the terrible effects of um, a criminal record in reducing your chances of getting a job. You, prisons are the universities of crime. We have to break that circle. Mm. Oh, yeah. Interestingly, of course, uh, as in many areas of what Becker does, he's he's harking back uh, 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 to earlier thinkers like Bentham, Beccaria in this case, uh, you know, Adam Smith uh, all the time. I mean, one of the things that impresses me about Becker is his knowledge of past ideas, but able to develop those beyond what the original progenitors of these ideas would have been able to conceive. And that, you know, that I think is in this area of crime, it's, it's particularly obvious, I think. Well, well, well but Becker, Becker's, Becker has a wonderful, a wonderful capacity to read. Uh, you see quotations from Bernard Shaw, from, from Bentham, uh, from, from, from the classes, from all the, all the main economists. Friedman, of course, was, was one of his mentors. Um, um, uh, he's, he's extremely widely read. What a wonderful man he must have been to know. Um, mm -hmm. um, and what, what, while we're on this, this subject of uh, um, wonderment at the, man's, at the man's breadth, I've got to bring in the idea of his, 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 his final work, which was on happiness. Um, um, happiness has become a very important area of research over the last few years, um, with people asking, how, how happy do you feel with your life on a scale of one to five? And that's, but Becker goes much further than that. He says that we have within us a happiness function. Um, we're, we're, designed, we're designed to be happy. Um, uh, uh, and um, if, if something bad happens to you, a divorce or unemployment, or, or even losing a limb, you, you, you can generally overcome that. Uh, you, 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 you eventually become pretty much as happy as you were before because you change your target. Um, and, uh, so, and, and this has quite nice consequences because if you get very rich, you you do you do you're not that much happier. It reminds one of that that wonderful wonderful poem by Rudyard Kipling. If mm. um, triumph and disaster are imposters, you'll you'll get over it. Um, you fail your eleven plus. It's terrible. 
you don't go to the grammar school, but you'll get over it. And, and so that, that's, that's, that was his final paper in the Journal of Political Economy in 2007, that, that happiness is really a sort of control function. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Well, um, if we could sort of focus on the the, the methodology which uh, Becker brings to all these very disparate areas, you know, uh, he focuses on maximizing utility. He's got stable preferences in there, and he's looking, always looking for what the equilibrium which the market will throw up uh, will be. Now, those ideas, uh, you know, this this use of of, of rational rational person, if you like, rational man, um, has come under increasing attack, hasn't it, from uh, behavioral e economists. Yes. Um, you know, there's been this huge expansion of, of behavioral economics in the journals uh, in, in recent years. Now, does this, uh, the basic idea of behavioral economics, of course, is that, is that we, you know, we don't behave in this kind of rational way, that we have biases, we misperceive things, we take inconsistent mm -hmm. judgment, you know, we, we're making inconsistent choices and so on. So does this mean that, that Becker's work is really, uh, has really been superseded by this uh, by this new approach. What do you think about that? Yes, yes. Well, this this is very irritating. Um, <laughs> this is Kahneman's uh, book. Right? Kahneman's international bestseller, Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, Kahneman and Tversky and Daniel Arely at Duke University, um, they've made a name for themselves by 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 pointing up how irrational we are. Um, they, they, it's, it's a bit unfair. Um, Arely, for example, says that if, you, if you're looking at a, a magazine, a penthouse magazine, or he calls it sexual arousal, um, then you're less likely to make sensible discounting decisions. Uh, well, isn't that obvious? Uh, uh, Becker wouldn't deny that if you're sexually aroused, you'll be stupid. And by the way, and then it really says, oh, yes, and by the way, this doesn't really happen with women as much as men. Women aren't as interested in penthouse. So that's rather obvious. Um, now, Daniel, Daniel Kahneman, um, he, he's got more citations by almost twice as many as Becker. Um, He's got a, a, a much higher H score. It's nearly 200. So nearly 200 people have found more than 200 of Kahneman's articles worth citing. Um, Becker is around about 130. Fantastically good. But he's not nearly as popular. But I, 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 I don't think it's, it's... You're not going to find Becker's book on the economic approach to human behavior. You're not going to find that in the airport. Uh, it's, this is not fun to read. Whereas it is quite fun to read that, that uh, oh, oh yes, that the eye can be deceived. You, 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 if, if, you, if, you look, uh, if you look at an arrow, uh, sorry, Attention, you, you, you can be deceived. If, if you see a black, uh, a black line on a white background, rather than a white line on a black background, you'll, you'll think that the two lines are different, even though they're not. So we can be confused. Also, we think that snakes are very, are very dangerous. But they're not. But they're not. The mm. silver BMW is much more dangerous. Um, so, so we, 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 we are not all seeing, we're not very fast at calculating, but, but that's not a problem. Um, there is such a thing as rational ignorance. There's no point in learning about everything. It doesn't, you don't have the time. When you're going to buy a camera, you, you look at about 10 of them in the days when you bought cameras. Let's say a mobile phone. Look at, you look at three or four of them and then you buy it. You don't get, become encyclopedic in your knowledge of mobile phones. What's the point? It's called rational ignorance. And Becker tells us that. So, so it's, you, 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 or, or, or you, you, want, you want to have stable preferences. 
you want to maximize as well as you can. And, 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 and that's, that's enough to, de to develop the important theorems. First of all, when price goes up, quantity demanded goes down. When price goes up, quantity supplied goes up. When taxes are imposed, quantity exchanged goes down. These, these important theorems remain. And you can apply that to the various types of goods, including the strange goods, the marriage good, the child good, the education good, and leisure. Mm. Leisure, leisure is another good. The, the, I mean, one of the, the, if we can come, you know, towards the uh, conclusion on this, I mean, but the, uh, our interest in this series is very much on contributions to uh, classical liberal thought and the, the idea that, that uh, things are best left to individuals, to markets, rather than to governments. And one of the things that worries me a bit about behavioral economics, of course, is it tells us that people can't be trusted and that the government should do things instead, essentially. Uh, I mean, this, a lot of this lies behind the, you know, the COVID oh, restrictions yeah. we've experienced recently. Don't they? The, the government knows better than us uh, what we should be doing. So, I, you know, my feeling is that Beck, one of Becker's major contributions, in a sense, is to say people are rational, people can sort out things for themselves, and the government should intervene where necessary, but not everywhere. I mean, what, what's your view? No, 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 you're quite right, Len. Um, the, the, we are the best judges of our, of our own interests. We're not stupid. Um, there, there, it, it is true that there are personality concepts. I'm thinking of the big five, um, the big five personality traits. That's um, self-control, willingness to compete, intrinsic motivation, grit. Um, the, these can be analyzed further. The, the, they, the non-cognitive skills, if you want. Mm -hmm. um, James Heckman, the, the professor at, at Chicago, who's, uh, who used to be a colleague of Becker, is analyzing the, these, the, these, these traits. Um, and, 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 and they deserve f further analysis. They are very, very important. We don't want to say they aren't. But of course, the, go the government um, it couldn't have a party in a brewery, uh, is, is the phrase that I, that, that I use. And, and, and we have to be very careful. Um, when, when it comes to discrimination as well, the government tries to eradicate discrimination, but in fact, all it does is erect positive discrimination in se instead. Um, for example, old workers are meant to be paid, or, or old, old workers like me are not, not allowed to be dismissed anymore because that, 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 that's, that, that, that's discrimination. But clearly old workers are different to young and you have to, you have to accept that. Uh, and there are differences, which um, the government is quite reluctant to accept. Right. Well, unfortunately, that's about all we've got time for today. Thank you very much, uh, Stan, for, for uh, this conversation, which I'm sure will extend on some future future yes. occasion. Yes. I'd like to thank uh, our viewers, too, from, uh, for, for joining us on this. I hope you found it as interesting as we did. We are producing a wide range of original content every week. Um, so please subscribe to the IEA YouTube channel an IEA podcast, which is available on Podbean, Spotify, and Apple. You can now support the IEA's digital output on Patreon, where we have set up a membership platform that allows our followers to donate uh, solely towards our digital work. And as an online patron, you will have access to exclusive IEA perks, priority access to our content and a lot more. So thank you once again for, for joining us today and we hope you'll join us again soon on this series.